Hello, behind me you see my 2024 Ford F350 Super Duty pickup truck. This is the blank canvas for my new off-road and overland build. And uh, I just picked up this truck in uh, Iowa, actually, that's where I bought it at Granger Ford, uh, just outside of Des Moines. Uh, drove it home 1800 miles from Des Moines to uh, San Diego, here where I live. And uh, yeah, this will be the new base vehicle for my new Overland build. And uh, in today's video, I'm going to give you a tour of this unmodified uh, Ford F350 and uh, give you all the details and uh, also talk about a few things why I ordered the vehicle as it is standing here. All right, let's get started on the outside and then we'll jump inside. So this is the long wheelbase uh, with the eight foot bed uh, pickup truck. I need the additional space the, that the longer platform offers. So uh, I have a specific camper on order that I will talk about in a different video. But uh, to put that camper onto this vehicle or to convert this vehicle into what it will become, I needed the longer wheelbase. And uh, that was one of the reasons why the truck uh, is standing here accordingly. So the F350 also offers additional weight capacity and I will put a picture in here of uh, what the GVWR is for this vehicle. Uh, I think it's over 4,400 pounds of uh, load capacity that I can put on top of the vehicle and the F350 really is the better platform. Uh, the F250 uh, is a great truck but it's really just a three-quarter ton truck and it's not giving me enough uh, carrying capacity uh, for what I need. My previous truck was a Tremor uh, with the uh, off-road capabilities that Ford offers for the Tremor package. Unfortunately, Ford does not offer the Tremor package on the long wheelbase truck. So the eight foot bed trucks cannot get the uh, Tremor package, unfortunately. So what did I do? So I ordered the FX4 F by four uh, off-road package. It's really just, I want to say, a sticker and a couple of skid plates. Uh, it's not doing anything else uh, to really make this vehicle off-road capable. I also have to say Ford, until I think it was 2019, 2020, delivered the Super Duties slightly higher uh, than what you see here. So um, while I have some decent ground clearance, the off-road package really is just minor, uh, but uh, the truck has the rear locker. I think that's um, also part of the FX4 package. And uh, yeah, that's really what I need. I need 4x4 uh, and I need some off-road capabilities. Uh, this truck will get converted. It will get a lift. It will get bigger tires and wheels. So uh, from that perspective, what you see here again is the blank canvas. But that's really from the outside. Uh, under the hood, uh, let's take a look there. So under the hood is the uh, V8 7.3 liter Godzilla gas engine. So I again opted for the gas engine and um, my plan is still to travel down the Pan American Highway and uh, go down into middle and South America and the diesel situation down there is just very different uh, compared to here in the United States and uh, with a gas engine uh, I'm simply better off to get into those countries and uh, find the right fuel for my vehicle. With a diesel uh, with the low sulfur situation and death, uh, yeah, the higher maintenance it's just not the right vehicle for me and uh, so the gas engine is easier to maintain there's a lot of stuff I can do myself. There's a little more space in the engine bay compared to the uh, 6.7 liter uh, diesel V8. Yeah, that's the reason why I went with the uh, Godzilla engine. Um, I ordered two batteries, uh, one here on the driver's side and the main battery here on the passenger side. Uh, those are AGM batteries. Uh, unlike my 2022 uh, Super Duty uh, that had the regular uh, or old-fashioned car batteries, uh, Ford opted to upgrade uh, the Super Duty batteries to the AGM batteries. So offers a little better um, starting capacity and uh, easier to maintain and hopefully these don't die as quickly as the regular batteries that I had in my F250. Um, in my F250 after one year uh, the first battery was um, almost dead so I replaced them both with AGM. Um, didn't use a Ford warranty for that but uh, here I hope that I don't have this problem and I don't have to spend money on uh, new batteries. But uh, yeah, that's uh, really how the uh, V8 Godzilla with uh, 7.3 liters uh, looks like. So again, there's plenty of space. I have a few things that probably will go underneath here. 
I have uh, one thing on order. I have the upfitter switches and uh, the upfitter switches, the uh, box and the cables will be down here. So I have a wiring harness on order that will make it easier to connect items to the upfitter switches. And uh, I do not need to invest money into like a Switch Pros or other third party switch panel like I had to do on my uh, F250. So this truck here, as you see it, it has a lot of chrome. Uh, I'm planning to uh, wrap the front and make the grill uh, black. And uh, the bumper will go away. So this will be replaced with an off-road bumper. Uh, same thing happens in the rear, that bumper and the entire bed actually will go away. Uh, but uh, there are some changes um, that I will make before the truck goes into the shop for the uh, big conversion. So the chrome here, uh, that will all go away. Uh, I have to see how I work around the Ford logo. The bumper I will leave as is. Uh, you see the um, wind or whatever this thing here is called um, it looks ridiculous in my opinion so I will either cut this uh, to the same size that my trimmer had it uh, which is roughly till here or I will just remove this thing all together uh, so that the truck looks a little better until the bumper goes away uh, I have an Outback bumper uh, selected that will come on here, but all these uh, major changes to the vehicle, they will come in August and September when the vehicle gets converted uh, to the, I want to say the final look, the final stage. Uh, everything that I had to do on the uh, F250 trimmer uh, will be done here in one go. And when I get the vehicle back, it's pretty much turnkey uh, and ready to uh, rock and roll, go off-road, uh, go camping and go travel. More chrome here. Uh, I'm not sure if I will black this out. Um, I'll probably try and see how black on black is. I have like a shiny wrap, a shiny black wrap selected. I have to see how that uh, plays along with the other black here. Uh, but we'll see um, the mirrors. I don't have to do anything there. Uh, again, the bed will go away, but uh, let's talk about the bed in general. So for one, you have the uh, bed step here which is actually really nice. I know a lot of people are complaining about it. I think it's actually really convenient to get into the bed from here. Then, of course, I have the tailgate with the tailgate step and uh, I can open the tailgate uh, remotely. So I just uh, push the button twice. Uh, it goes down. This is uh, a lariat from an equipment perspective. So I still have to lift this up by hand on the higher trims. Uh, you can actually push the buttons and the tailgate will close by itself. Uh, the tailgate step. So again, this is uh, very similar to what I had in my 2022 F250. Uh, again, makes it convenient to get in. It doesn't play a major role for me. Again, the bed will be removed. Uh, I opted not to have like a bed liner, a spray in bed liner or anything really. I really don't care if it stretches up till then. Right now, um, no stretches so far. But uh, yeah, it's the eight foot bed offering a lot of space. The nice thing that Ford offers here, since this is a, a work truck really, you have inches and centimeters here, like a measuring tape in a certain way. Makes it easy when you work. Now we'll test and see. Like I said, this is a lariat. I'm gonna push the button twice. Uh, uh, the tailgate is not moving. You can hear it unlocking, but since it's already down, there's nothing that needs to be done. It has a helper spring uh, to lift it up. It's, it's a heavy tailgate. I don't know what the weight is uh, specifically, but overall it's, it's very convenient. I mentioned before the truck has the Lariat Ultimate package or Lariat and then the Lariat Ultimate package on top of it. So it has the uh, backup parking sensors here. Uh, those will carry over into the new bumper. The uh, tailgate camera, which is quite interesting, there are two. So there's the regular one and then there's one here. Uh, at least one of these will be carried over into the new vehicle and uh, provide the same functionality uh, that I currently have um, with the vehicle the way it is here. Up on top here, I have the two antennas for the Sirius XM satellite radio. And then on this side uh, is for the navigation. Uh, I am planning to relocate at least the one for the navigation. I'm not sure if I relocate the one for Sirius. I'm not using satellite radio. I don't have any plans for that, but I might relocate both. It involves quite some work actually. And um, I saw one person on YouTube uh, relocated it here. So um, I might just place one of those here. I already have a spare one that I purchased 
and I have to look at the wiring and then uh, see if I can either trace it back to the entertainment or info system and uh, then move it from there uh, either through the firewall or there are two openings here, one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side and uh, feed the wires up there uh, to get it relocated. But that's stuff I will do until August. The truck comes with the factory tint, so I'm planning to uh, tint the front door uh, windows, of course. Um, I had a 70% tint on the windshield at my old truck. I'm planning to do the same thing here. Uh, the rear window I will leave as is. There's no work necessary. It will pretty much be covered at the very end and yeah, I don't need to spend money on the tin there. All right, let's take a look at this truck on the inside. Okay, so here you can see the truck from the inside. I have the uh, Baja interior with the uh, beige or cream color or um, brown color with the black um, uh, accent colors here. I just love how the truck looks like from the inside. The, the color scheme is really different from before. I had the black seats before and I found that a quite boring uh, but also um, yeah in the summer heat those seats uh, could get really hot. I hope that uh, these here with the different uh, uh, seat color itself uh, are not getting as hot but overall I really like the color scheme. Uh, this was new with the 2023 models. Uh, Ford offered a different color on the 22s and before which I wasn't a fan of but um, this color scheme here really makes the truck look um, yeah more homey for me, uh, more fresh. Uh, so I'm really excited that I was able to get this color and I mean this is a custom order truck so I ordered this from Ford specifically with all the features and functions uh, that I wanted from this truck. Uh, here you can see the material there's a light gray a little darker color here this is a typical thing this was in my uh, 2022 as well uh, but other than that it's like uh, lots of storage more cup holders down here the speakers uh, it's I think the color scheme itself um, really speaks uh, for itself all right let's start in the front and work our way back this is a Lariat and then I ordered the Lariat Ultimate package. Um, so the truck has the heads up display and I will put some a picture or some video footage here that you can see how that looks like. I never had a heads up display before and uh, I'm I have to say I'm in love with it. The system is so great. Uh, it's like, how did I live without it before? So uh, that's how I feel about it. I really like it. This, of course, looks different now and kind of have to get used to it on, on one way because it sticks out more compared to my previous truck. But uh, yeah, this is the 2024 model. So it has uh, the nice computer screen. This is all computer, no more analog displays. Android Auto on the nice 12 inch screen. Overall, I like the display. This looks very similar to my old truck. Slight differences in the overall design, but other than that, it's not uh, that much different. Down here are the uh, drive modes and the uh, 4x4 selections. So if I select a different drive mode, this is normal. Then for slippery weather, it shifts into 4x4. That complains about the seat belts. Let's see where it goes now. Um, off-road mode, uh, which is important. Uh, with the off-road mode, um, for one, this screen just switched and turned on the camera. Uh, here on the off-road mode, you can see the compass uh, on the left side. Uh, you see the RPMs. I want to say adds a little nice um, functionality to the screen. It also shows the elevation. So I'm at 344 feet above sea level. Uh, overall, I mean, I can still change the screen. Uh, okay, now that I talked about it, you probably just saw this come up. So it shows me the angles. It's almost like the truck is listening to what I'm doing. And uh, it shows the locker. So uh, really helpful from that perspective. I haven't taken it off-road. It doesn't really have great off-road tires. Uh, I mean, those are the um, factory tires that are currently on here. I'll probably go into Anza Borrego Desert a little bit and uh, test it out there, but uh, it will not be heavy off-road, and especially I don't have a lift on this vehicle. Uh, this switched back to uh, Android Auto in this case. Uh, so lots of nice functionality and that really was important to me. So and that's one of the reasons why I wanted the um, 4x4 FX4 package on top of this. So the truck also has adaptive cruise control. It has the uh, radar sensor up here and of course it has the um, uh, sensor up in the front as well. So uh, the 
adaptive cruise control. Um, it actually comes with that Copilot 360. Um, it has some self-driving features to a degree. So that means I can uh, turn it on uh, once it locks into the lanes on the highway. It steers by itself. It follows the curvature. I don't have to do anything. I have to hold the steering wheel. It wants to feel that something is moving the steering wheel. So it's not a sensor that feels like that I have some, my hand or anything on the steering wheel. It wants to feel like some weight balance. And you can see I'm, I'm barely shifting the steering wheel. And that's really uh, all it takes to uh, keep the system happy when you drive with the adaptive cruise control. And uh, I've been on very curvy roads with it activated. It keeps the distance to the front uh, vehicle. It slows down. It accelerates, not always gracefully. But overall, the system, I was really impressed when I was driving back. It made highway driving very convenient. When I was coming back from Iowa, 1,800 miles, I mean, that's a long time driving. And having the adaptive cruise control really made a big difference in um, how quickly the time went by, um, how relaxed and not fully exhausted I was at the end of the day. That system, it's like, I love it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I will order this with my next vehicle whenever or whatever that will be. Uh, I hope I don't need a next vehicle for a long time, but I'm glad I have it in this truck here. The drive back from Iowa, it was really, I don't want to say relaxing, but it made it a lot easier compared to just having regular cruise control uh, where you just still have to pay so much more attention uh, when the car starts drifting in my old truck, uh, the steering wheel started vibrating. Uh, so here now it's automatically steering within the lanes. There were some situations where the um, lane markings disappeared and the system had to guess for a bit and then it either found the lane markings again or it said canceling and it shifts the responsibility 100% back to me. I still have responsibility when I drive with the uh, adaptive cruise control turned on, but it's really supporting the driver and making it significantly easier. So here's our cruise control, uh, speaker volume and muting. On this side here is the main menu. Uh, you used to have two OK buttons on the uh, 2022s, one here and one here. But uh, now Ford shifted everything with the menus um, onto this side. It took me a little bit to get used to it, but uh, once you have the hang of it, uh, really easy. So you hit the uh, menu button, and if you look on the screen in the back, now it shifts and offers you different options in the main menu. So we can say back, uh, we go up here. There are the gauges, heads up display, trip fuel. Let's have a look here. There's trip one. Let's take a look at trip two. I turned on trip two when I picked up the vehicle in Iowa. The truck has run for 31 hours. It drove 1,780 miles. It currently has 1,851. Uh, the truck already had over 60 miles on the clock when I picked up the truck. I'm not sure how they, how much they drove in Iowa or how much they drove in Kentucky where it was built, but uh, the truck already had something on it. But yeah, this goes back to the menu here. I'm hitting back. Uh, it switches back here. I can go to trip one. I just filled up at Costco. Uh, so the truck has run one hour and 42 minutes. Uh, I drove 14.4 miles and my MPG is a whooping 6.7. Uh, that is not great, but like I said, I just filled it up. All right, I'm not going to go through all these menus. Uh, there are plenty of videos here on YouTube uh, where you can watch those. I usually leave it with the driver assistance, at least for now. That's um, all that matters to me. I made changes to the uh, gauges up on top so that I have the temperature information for the uh, radiator, um, the oil pressure uh, information here for the um, engine temperature and uh, also transmission. And then of course, miles to empty. I can change these gauges if I wanted to, but uh, there's a lot of stuff I still have to play with. The weather was not that beneficial here in California. So I um, spend a lot more time indoors and not um, testing out the truck. All right, let's take a look here at the center console. This is the same as in the 22 uh, with one difference. There's now a button here for the heated steering wheel. Uh, in my previous truck, you had to go to the uh, climate settings on the uh, navigation system or in the uh, big screen uh, to make changes. Now they put the button in here, which I find much more convenient. Uh, heated sealed seats, cool seats, uh, and then the typical max air and uh, rear window defrost and so on. But um, yeah, this is not very different compared to before. Uh, 12 volt outlet. And then here, 
uh, a 120 outlet. Down here is wireless charging. Um, so I can put my phone in here. Uh, then here there's a USB-C and a USB-A port. Uh, so plenty of opportunity um, to plug in devices. However, um, I bought the built right uh, dash mount that will go in here and I'm planning to put power up here because that's where I want to um, mount my GoPro for driving but also have my phone and be able to charge my phone up here. Uh, I find it much easier with the phone up here and not having it somewhere down here if I need to check something while I'm driving uh, whatever the case may be or um, when I want to forward music or a reverse and uh, play a song again that I really liked so uh, that will go in here but uh, it's not in here just yet. This section here um, again is not changed much. You can move this over so that you have room for um, four drinks. These are massive so these are probably for the big gulp from 7-Eleven or whatever massive drinks you can get from gas stations and convenience stores. Uh, I usually leave it like this at the moment I use my use this for my phone and um, just put it in here but uh, nothing changed here. A uh, big center console with the typical insert. I still have some stuff in here, tissues, some water, and uh, it's a massive area. I'm still undecided if I wanted to get the console safe. In my previous truck I had a console safe in here uh, with a number combination. All right, let's switch over to the passenger side and uh, we'll pick up from there. Uh, before I head over, um, again, plenty of storage down here. This seems to have gotten bigger. Uh, compared to before. Uh, we'll see. Um, it's always difficult to find stuff that can go in there because it's also rattling. So um, I have to find like some rubber or something that I can put in here so that stuff is not rattling. The seat is uh, fully electric. I don't have the fold flat seats uh, but I will have a camper in the rear so I don't necessarily need that. Okay, now getting in on the passenger side. Um, just like on the driver's side, the seat is fully electric. All right, let's get in on the passenger side. Of course, different angle. You will not see the heads-up display from the passenger side. To see the speed, uh, you would have to lean over more. So this is something, it was easier to see the speed as the passenger in my previous truck in the 2022 uh, F250 Tremor compared to here, but not a big deal. I am not planning to sit in the passenger seat a lot. So um, this is my truck. I'm alone. The dog doesn't drive. Um, she will be in the rear. Then here, storage. There's two uh, compartments here. This one opens up from this side, so the button is over here instead of I think it was previously in the door. So, small compartment, but uh, yeah, I will find something that can go in here. Let's open this one. Uh, this one is a little larger, uh, has a window sticker in here and uh, all the paperwork from when I bought the truck. The plugs for when you remove the tailgate so that you can uh, properly connect and close the open wiring from the wiring harness in the rear. Other than that, it's the same storage down here. Lots of storage in the door, not that much different. So then let's take a look at the top of uh, the roof here. My previous truck didn't have the upfitter switches. Uh, this one has six upfitter switches. Very convenient up on the roof of the truck. So I like that. I probably would prefer to have eight of those, but there's only six. I might run a little low in regards to the switches because I need one for the ditch lights or A pillar lights. Uh, then I need two for a light bar that is coming in, uh, one for the rear bumper lights, and then uh, one will be for the air compressor that goes in. That leaves me with one open switch. And yeah, I'm planning to either add some additional lights where I would need those, but I'm also, I would like to have an air horn installed um, for several reasons. A4 uh, that I can be heard, but also from a security perspective, uh, I want to use it as part of my defense, so to speak, should I get into a sketchy situation. Sunglasses will go in here. Then this button here is different to the uh, previous F250. So this button here opens the rear window. The rear window will go away and maybe that is the additional button that I can use. Uh, I have to find the wiring, but uh, then use that button as an example for, I don't want to say the air horn or so, but it's, it's a different type of button. You have to hold it, that it opens. So I would have to experiment with it and just see, maybe I can use that button. Uh, lights up here. This is for the entire cab. So it turns the lights on everywhere. 
This one is just for the passenger side and I think this one turns the lights off when I open the door. Uh, let's have a look. Yep, so the lights are not turning on. If I push this button, now the lights turn on. If I close the door, the lights will slowly dim off. I like this, I had this uh, in my previous truck as well. I find this very convenient when at camp that I turn off the lights. So if I just need to grab something from the truck that it's not turning into a light show and attracting bugs or drains the battery. Now let's hop into the rear and uh, take a look how the situation is on the rear seat in this truck. All right, yeah. So you can hear the truck is complaining that the key was not in the vehicle. I have some four-scan work to do to turn off all those dings. Uh, I want to be able to drive without a seatbelt when I'm off-roading because you get in and out of the truck, you're moving at a very slow speed. I don't need the truck complaining when I have the seatbelt uh, disconnected for a while. But yeah, I'm sitting in the rear here, uh, plenty of space. You can see here, I'm sitting very comfortable. I have plenty of space to the seat. That seat is uh, pretty far back, so very convenient. Yeah, I think for long journeys, if you would be sitting here as a passenger, uh, definitely a comfortable ride. The seat feels comfortable. Uh, these are actually heated seats too, so in winter, if somebody would be sitting here, uh, very convenient. So here in the center console, uh, you can see the buttons for the heated seats. Uh, air vents for the left and the right uh, and then down here a 12 volt outlet and a 120 this way two USB C's no USB A in the rear which is fine uh, I think USB A is on the way out and uh, from that perspective uh, not that important here in the center two more cup holders uh, there are two cup holders here, there are cup holders in the doors, um, plenty of room for drinks. So the seat, rear seat has a 60-40 split, uh, it's probably more 70-30 based on uh, how this looks like, but it's a, a one-third, two-thirds type of split in here. So if I can pull the string here, I can lift up the seat. It stores nicely up and gives a lot of space. Uh, this truck comes with under seat storage here, which is actually lockable. So I could put valuables in here and then lock the seat and you cannot raise it unless you're using really brute force. Uh, plenty of storage here. I am planning to put a dock platform in here, fold the seats up and then um, have a dock platform in here for my dock Shelby. The weird thing uh, with this 2024 model, and I don't know if the 2023s have it as well, uh, I open the door, the door step comes down. Again, this comes with the Lariat Ultimate Package and I really enjoyed having those in my previous truck because once it's lifted, it's uh, very convenient to get in. So I will close this and then I walk over to the other side quickly because you will see that um, the step on the other side also came out even though there is no open door. So here's the step and after a few seconds, the step goes up. I don't know why this side comes down even though the door was only opened uh, on the left side of the vehicle. So that's my uh, 2024 Ford F350 Super Duty pickup truck. Everything that uh, I showed you here I ordered on purpose. I wanted to have a certain creature comfort. I wanted heated and cool seats as an example. So um, I wanted the Lariat package and then uh, with the Lariat Ultimate package I got the uh, Copilot 360, the heads up a display uh, includes navigation as well so I will put some video in here where it shows the navigation uh, on the uh, windshield which really makes driving very convenient. Uh, this truck will see some changes before August but not dramatic. Uh, I will install some A-pillar lights. Um, I will, like I mentioned before, I will wrap the grill black. I get the windows tinted. Some, some minor stuff on the inside but the big conversion really will happen in August. But uh, yeah, I wanted to give you a tour of this vehicle that you know what is the canvas, what is my new base foundation uh, for my new off-road build and uh, overland travel truck. So I hope you liked this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so as well. And then I would say I see you next time in my next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.